this will do to people when they find out the truth? I don't think that most people would want to know the truth. I do. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Peace, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hindsight Radio, the information station changing the nation. And you're listening to the Truth Tuesday show with your host, Akeem L. First, I want to do a mic check. Can y'all hear, hear me pretty good? Let me, let me, uh, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Well, I think y'all can because I got a phone working and, uh, make sure my voice is coming through good. But I just, give me, somebody give me a confirmation in the chat or text. If you got your phones handy, um, oh, y'all can hear me clear. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, I hope everybody had a great week. I always have good weeks, you know. Yeah, I meet challenging situations, but it always turns out for the best. Um, a lot of stuff happened over the last week. Uh, people on YouTube or with the Red Table Talk, I guess that's uh, Jada's platform to share other people's business and they, you know this week she shared her own business about her um affair with a a young boy that was uh I don't want to insult the kid and call him a boy uh a young man who was her son's friend she had an affair outside of a marriage we all that know that's nothing new that's stuff that happens in relationships um, I don't see why we needed to know all of that about their business, but it's 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 set the internet ablaze. YouTube people are commenting, people have their opinions about it. I had a few opinions about it myself. Oh, uh, but it revealed toxic behavior between us as melanated people. Or, you know, as the public know, wants to call us black people, African-Americans. We all know those are bad titles to call ourselves. Um, so, like I said, it revealed toxic behavior. It seems like we go out of our way to hurt each other, especially when we feel like we're justified in doing things, you know? And also, it seems like we go out of our way to seek pleasures for ourselves selfishly, even though we know it's going to ruin, possibly ruin our relationships. You know, I'm guilty of that. I've done that in the past, done crazy stuff. But I'm grown up now, so I see that those short-lived experiences, they uh, only cause problems, you know? And at the end of the day, that person you're, you're you're running off with, you ain't even with that person. They don't mean anything. It just means a, a what a, a physical sexual experience, and then you move on, right? Um, and so, what does that say about our care for ourselves, our love for ourselves? That means we don't love ourselves that good. If we're willing to take a risk on our family arrangement for someone, we will probably say they don't mean anything. They don't mean as much as you. We'll take a chance on something that doesn't mean anything that can ruin something that does mean mean something. I've heard, you know, people people said that from time to time. I've heard that many times. But when you think out the psych the psychology of that, that is really self hate. Because you're really sabotaging your happiness and risking the future of your building a a a, a good foundation at family for some some outside garbage. Someone, you, you know, you wouldn't take home to your mama. Someone you don't want to induce, you, you keep, there's someone you keep in, in the closet. Isn't that psychologically imbalanced thinking? Really? And it also revealed, you know, just by some of the comments, it revealed uh this toxic, feministic 
attitude that some of our sisters is taking on. I know a lot of y'all sisters don't think like this, but a lot of sisters do think like this. And this is the reason why we have a lot of this, uh, it's okay to have these, the, 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 this gay stuff going on, boys dressing as girls. You see Dwayne Wade got his son, young man, young boy, really. He's a boy already dressed, wanting to be a girl. You know, where did he get that from? You taught that behavior. Okay? You know, Dwayne Wade was always dressing kind of funny anyway. Towards the end of his career, you know, he got with uh, masculine uh, Gabrielle Union. And so she's the man, he's the woman. See, they they reverse in roles. And this is just like the Jada Pickett thing and uh Will Smith. He when you I watch I didn't watch the whole interview. And the part that I didn't watch, it turned my stomach because the way he was responding, it's like he didn't like he was only there because he had to be there. You know, it it was a good publicity stunt type thing. And because no straight man is going to sit in front of an audience and tell his business like that. You know, like me as a straight guy, I'm not going to sit there, even if I have a public platform and talk about that type of thing to people. Because really, it doesn't matter what y'all think about my relationship, whether I forgive her or move on uh, or don't. It doesn't matter what we think because I ain't paying none of their bills. They got enough money to take care of themselves. So what I think about them doesn't really matter. And this also serves as a distraction to what we're really supposed to be doing. But back to Will. He was, you know, he was acting like a little pussy. <laughs> like, yo, this, you know, yeah, first of all, I wouldn't have been there as a man. And then, you know, she seemed disingenuous about the whole situation. Uh, there's a young lady on YouTube called Art Kathy. She's got a nice following, and she was talking about it. She had her perspective about it. And uh, she brought up some very good points. I'm going to play her clip, a couple of clips from what she was saying. And it might bother some of you. you know, mostly might bother some of you females who think like she's talking about. So sometimes when the shoe fits, uh, people get upset. But if it don't fit you, it shouldn't bother you. If you're not in this category of what she's talking about, it shouldn't bother you. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to play that clip. Um, also, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, this whole SBA loan thing. They're giving out money like it's free lunch, man. They're giving it away. People, oh, I got the money. I get called. They're giving it two days. You know? And, you know, I've even been thinking about doing it myself. But, you know, I read the documents. I'm going to read that later on in the 8 o'clock hour and go over that. Also, we're going to talk about homeschooling briefly. Just a little touch on that. Next week, we're going to go into it a little deeper. I have uh, the new host that's going to talk about homeschooling. He's got a website. But I'm going to talk about that briefly because we really need to um, start homeschooling our children. The education system is an indoctrination camp, and it's getting worse. If you don't realize that now, uh, then that means you've been asleep for the last few months. Um and it's time for us to do this whole no, no holds bar approach to our prosperity. You know, this system is going down. You know, now it's a matter of how you're going to, you know, how you're going to uh, operate while it's going down. It's done. It's pretty much done. You know, you, what you're seeing is, you know, just symptoms that's just going to keep getting worse and worse. If y'all think it's going to get better, it's not. Uh, <laughs> They're going to come up with something else. Right now, bubonic plague is on its way. Something they were talking about that. Well, really, really, they're talking about that. But back to this whole toxic behavior that we have in our communities. And this is why we're not doing well. One of the things that the young lady said, and I agree with her wholeheartedly, that a nation can never rise bigger than its woman. So if our women are out there twerking and doing whole like things or whole like things, that's the the basis of their existence. Like I was on uh, Instagram and someone I know posted a little video. Oh, we lit up in here, and it and I'm like, okay, it's music playing. Then I look, they got a blow up chitty pool in a room. 
I guess it was a club, but I don't know. This is in New York. Uh, with women half naked. I guess it was like a strip club. I don't know. Talk about we lit, and it was in the with little bubbles in the water. You know, the thing wasn't. It, it was like the, the the water was puddle deep. And they were shaking their thing. They were twerking. I guess they were strippers. And, he, and he just looked at the brief time that I looked at it, the women wasn't even worth looking at. They looked like, oh, I don't even want to disagree. I ain't going to degrade these women like that. You know, they already degraded themselves enough. But that's what we're talking about. If these sisters are out there doing this, this is this is the example that they're setting for their children. I, some of them look like they had children. As I tell, I could see the the uh, you know the, the 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 pregnant stomach. You know, we you know they had a baby. You could tell they had a baby, but they're going out doing these things. And the ones that are not doing that type of behavior, they got a other types of toxic behavior. Where they feel like they can do anything a man can do. And that's not true. And a man can't do anything a woman can do. And a woman can't do everything a, a, a man can do. Definitely, I can't have a baby. And I ain't trying to do it. And some things women, y'all just can't do. We're designed to be, to do certain things. Because that's the way we're made, to do that good. And then a woman is designed to do certain things good, and you bring that together, you got the whole, um, how do I want to put that? The whole package is put together perfectly. But we're so busy looking at each other, clawing at each other's eyes, we're trying to prove each other wrong. We're not looking at the bigger issue. The bigger issue is our economy and our community is bad. It's no good. Everybody else is making money off of us, and we're not making anything off of anybody. Most of the money that we make, if we do have a business, come from the people in our community, and some outside sources come to buy with us if we have a store but front business. Other people don't frequent our businesses if they know it's us that owns it, if it's a storefront. I know this for a fact. There's a beauty supply store in um, South Carolina, and um, and in South Carolina they got it's a black-owned beauty supply store. They've been around for years. I'm not sure if they still live, but I go in there from time to time. And uh, when I was cutting here, and they were never that busy. Now you go into the Korean owned beauty supply store, and you see groups of young black women in there fighting over here, literally. And if they ain't got the hair they want, we got to go, Jenny. Y'all been out for two weeks. I came here before. And uh, the Korean people just talking trash to them like they ain't nothing. And this is where we're wanting to spend our money to pe- with people that don't even respect us. Sisters are fighting to look like something other than who they are. This is the distraction. This is, and these are all white supremacist ideals. If y'all, if y'all not getting it, they allow other groups of people to come in our community and do business with us, and limit how we do business with other people. Like barbering in South Carolina, when I I got into it in '95, right? It was a moderate right now and a minor barber. So then when a lot of people caught on and started to see this was a better way, best way to make money living in Columbia, South Carolina. And they were, you know, a lot of successful barbershops just opening up nice ones, really nice put together barbershops. What did they do? They changed the rules. They made it so that barbers have to learn how to do female hairstyles like a French roller set and some other style. Something we will never try to do as a barber. Me, been a registered barber since 1995. I have never done a French roller set. I didn't have to do it because that's not what I went to school for. I went to school to cut hair, men's hair, predominantly. And as, you know, this old LGBG thing took off, I started cutting more women's hair because they were cutting it off and trying to get the boy haircuts. 
every time we try to come up, they try to make a rule to slow us down. Then they made rules that if you had certain things on your record, like domestic violence and some other drug things, you have to go before the board to get your, your license. You see what I'm saying? And they surveil our barbershops like as if they already assume that you're selling drugs out of those shops. Now, 95% to 98% of those shops do not sell drugs. They are legitimate businesses. Every now, I knew a couple of shops I knew were shady, where the owner of the shop was a drug dealer. But for the most part, these were legitimate people who were either ex-military or they retired, they left their jobs because they got tired of them and opened up barbershops. But they automatically put surveillance on the shop. They put surveillance on my shop. I knew they were watching me. So I put cameras up to watch them. <laughs> they didn't like that. Why are you putting these cameras up? Because I'm watching y'all. <laughs> then they stopped bothering me. You know? So, I, you know, that reminds me of a, a, a situation where a young man came into my, well, two guys came into a shop. I'm closely behind them. A cop come running into my shop. Wanting to question them. Now, this is before I was even in this information. Right? And well, I wanted to question one guy, and they wanted to search him. I said, yo, uh, first of all, where's your warrant? I, I don't need one. Yes, you do. First of all, you're in a private business, so you need to leave this shop right now. <laughs> That's what I told him. And he said, well, well he got it. I said, no, he don't. He's on private property. So he left. The cop actually left the shop. And then when they came out, he tried to frisk him in front of my window, right there in front of I came out to listen, y'all, on private property again. You cannot do that here. This is not public property. Oh, we're just trying to do our job. I said, I know exactly what you're trying to do. You have no warrant, and you're looking for trouble. This man is coming here to get a haircut. As far as I know, he's a law abiding. I used the word citizen at that time. Now, you got a choice. You step off this property, or I'm going to make a phone call to your supervisor and have him tell you to step off the property. So he left. See, if you don't challenge these things, they'll do this stuff to you all day long. But back to the issue at hand. We got to stop worrying about Will and Jada. They full of shit. They got on TV and talked their whole business up. What about their children? that's witnessing this. Now, the children is going to be talking about this. Their friends. It's just a one big mess. And if y'all look at look up to these type of people that someone to admire and their kids don't even know what sexual orientation they want to be. Just like Will don't know. I think he knows who he want to be. He want both. And you know, to get what he got, he had to do some bending over. And Lord knows what Jada had to do. And she looked more like the man than he did in that old situation. But what I'm saying is we got to stop worrying about all of that BS and um, and concentrate on our prosperity. And that is building wealth, breaking this curse of not leaving anything behind to carry on to the future of our family. The reason why I'm teaching you guys how to be nationality so that y'all can bring something on. Teach them who they really are. They're not Africans. They're not from Africa. They're from here. This land is theirs. The reason why we don't we don't have any rights because we're not claiming. We're not claiming who we are. Set up your trust. All the wealthy people are setting up trust. So when they're gone, it's already taken care. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to play this because y'all, you know, it's a little rough. So you're a little rough. I'm going to play this, and then we're going to get into the whole SBA loan thing. I know y'all want to hear about that. And uh, if I could touch on it, I did find a CIE, CIA document about the Book of Genesis. I might touch on that today, but if I can't, don't have time, I'll touch on it another day. But here is the – let's get this, uh, this little clip I say. And it brought up some good points. Now, it does talk mostly about the sisters, but it's the sister talking about the sisters. And if we want to rectify our issues, we have to get our women got to be on board. You can't leave them behind. 
And some we're going to have to believe behind because they're going to be wanting to hold on to this white supremacy idea that uh, keep us stuck. They're going to want that. And for them, we leave them there. Let them, be, let, them, let, let them suffer from there by their own hand with this nonsense, you know. And I know not every sister is like what she's describing. I know two really good sisters, very good, who raised children and, um, and did a good, great job. All right, here we go. Black women were so in their lower root chakra on this thing. and se- so sexual. Black women are so sexual these days. I'm just, I'm so tired of it. Can't look past they pussy for nothing. But they lost virtuous. Not as much as you think. That narrative is not being told. One thing I realized as a matchmaker for all those years when I was in Atlanta, I quickly realized the first reason why I became a matchmaker and started doing singles events way back in the day was I was meeting all these amazing black men. And I was like, well, hell, I can't date them all. I created a database because I, I was learning how to meet them. I knew how to meet them. The goods I had attracted them. So it naturally gave me a database. But the other thing I saw was all of this, it ain't no good black men, and then all these quality black women were single. Media propaganda is real. I, I quickly found that out working with us and supposedly the worst place to find quality black men, which is also a lie. I saw immediately that black women were afraid to take accountability. They weren't as marketable as they thought they were. They didn't really have social skills, and they really weren't that appealing as they thought they were. Because when, you talk about, when I talk about the singles events and, and even um, screening people in the beginning, and personality times, you can immediately see, oh, he got a PhD, but I started saying, that means please help me date. Terrible with the opposite sex, on a web, and looking at them, like, didn't even know how to put themselves together, had poor body language coming into singles events. But you got a PhD, though, coming into singles events just looking. I said, wow. And then the ones that was together had such a nasty attitude. I was like, oh, oh, mm mm. And then I thought, this was a pattern over the years. Y'all saying y'all ready and y'all shit. It's the same black women act like they shit don't stink. Huh. And they acting like black men are not available and they're the reason why they single. That's not true. This is not true. I'm like, they are so full of shit. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm a black woman, clearly. <laughs> it's like, no, it's the type of black women that's having a problem. They have no game. They're overweight. They got terrible feminine grace or no feminine grace at all. Masculine. You know what I mean? Emotional baggage. Trauma. Been sexually abused. Have sexual trauma. That's still weight. I was like, I was seeing it. Like, nah. And I'm not saying that we are perfect. But the narrative is unbalanced. They were telling y'all that it's a shortage of good quality black men. And God help you, y'all really still believe that. It's not. It's actually not. It's a shortage of on code awake black women. When I talk to high quality men, they can't get you to have your weight in order. They can't get you to get your attitude in order. No feminine grace. You don't even know what that means. It, it, it means more than having a pussy, okay? Having a pussy, a vagina, and being a lady are two different things. You mean as hell. And you think your degree up your sexual market value, and it doesn't. It does. So these these same broads that get all the way up in life, they don't know who to look at, who to idolize, because they single themselves. They got a dysfunctional mindset themselves. So of course a lot of them were thinking that Jada was the bomb and, and missing it. Because they got a lot of issues themselves with the black man, with the black woman, with the black family, with this type, with this type of, of mindset. But they smoking weed, got the ump and the locks and all this stuff, and, and declaring they did. I'm going to read y'all another one. Oh, Lord, I love these comments sometimes, child. Some of these comments give me life everlasting. Let me see. Where was this? Trying to make sure. Oh, 
hold on, y'all. I can't remember where it was. Oh! All of y'all are not stupid. All, all of y'all are not stupid. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to look for this comment too long, but it was so good. Damn. Oh, okay. But he basically said, shout out to you, um, Bobby Drake. But he basically was saying um, that this is the type of thing that men, they looking at. Like, y'all are paying attention to this type of thing. Like, y'all already know. Hold on. I think I got to post. I think I remember where the post was now, y'all. My bad. I'm about to find it right. Okay, here we go. He said, Bobby Drake, shout out to you, boo. He said, we knew it because my post said, I hate to say I told you so. Hold on, my, my post. I said, I hate to say I told you so, but the Jada scandal revealed just how toxic slash mentally ill black females have become. Hashtag not sorry. And this is what my brother had to say. He said, we knew it to be true, but this situation did an excellent all caps job of flushing many of the more conservative ones out of hiding. The situation also revealed how big celebrity worship is among black people. You can lead a massive amount of black folks wrong if you simply put the right black face on it. Honey, and look, at John Ross Ford, he said, it's a blessing in disguise. Sisters don't know that quality men are writing them off judging from their replies. Worst part, they'll be whining to our Cassie about not being able to find a quality black man. It gets old after a while dealing with um, Cat Call Tyrone and Pistol Matt. Thank you. Shout out to you, Brother John Ross Thor and Brother Bobby Drake. It revealed how big celebrity worship is, and it did an excellent job of flushing many of those conservative, toxic, mentally ill ones out. If some of y'all see and he what he means by that and what I mean by that, to give more context, that's the residual feminism still left. Because again, that feminism, that war against the black man and black woman, that was given to you when they hit the male slave against the female slave. And it doesn't benefit us. It's anti survival. Okay? As I talked about, strong communities are built off of strong families. Strong businesses, strong economic structures are built off of communities. Communities are built off of families. That's the structure. If we have sexual confusion leading us and degeneracy and, oh, I can just do what I want and, you know, anything I can, anything they can do, I can do better. Feminist stuff, you're going to be out of whack and out of order as I see a lot of black women now. You think you got a dick. You don't have a dick. You do not have a dick. And that's all y'all have learned how to do is deflect. They have torn, exactly, they've torn the black family apart, and here you is supporting them. If you wanted the women that get this, you're welcome to the womb school. If you wanted the women that completely disagree, your womb school dudes and your book is non refundable. Just go ahead and leave. You can call me um, a woman basher. I've heard it all, honey. When you're standing for something and you're not falling for any old thing and you're not feminist, it's going to trigger you to your very core of your rotten, bitter, treacherous, treasonous soul. I do not wish to unify or align with those black women that think that they can do it all and do anything like Gabriel Union was telling y'all in her book. Oh, fuck it, pussy. Fuck it up. Fuck it down. Fuck it international. Fuck everybody. You don't think it's no rules? Oh, no. We're good. And you over 30 talking like this? If y'all don't get y'all dusty, failed sisterhood, church wig, cancer patient wig, wearing ass up at the collective, we're tired of you. The bitter, broken baby mama that's burned and, and busted and disgusted and still, still waiting on Boaz. Oh, Lord, they still waiting on Boaz in the church. You don't even know what you're calling me in at. And we're telling you that you need to get a black panther for your ass. Because all the niggas that like Boaz up in the church. Woo! If a man doing this in the church, he ain't heterosexual, sweetie. So a lot of black women, y'all have been duped. You haven't even been taught how to be a woman. You haven't seen the proper black family structure. So, of course, you're going to, okay, this mess. You're going to call the women that stand for something else everything you want, and we do not care. You guys, it's a race to the bottom. These twerkaholics, these same women, don't feel like you need to raise your daughter to do anything more than just twerk and get their hair done. I, 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 I'm 
over those black women. Don't even have them want to breastfeed. You talk about having more than three babies. Oh, Lord, no, one and done, one and done. Just, just so anti-survival, anti-family. You don't see nothing in it. All right, all right. All right, she said a lot. Woo! <laughs> and she was very frank. Graphic, of course. But was she lying? No, she wasn't. She's not lying. Uh, I've said that whole Boaz routine before. I'm waiting on my Boaz. But are you, you know... The thing that gets me about that statement is this. It's exactly what she said. The marketability of a lot of these women are saying this, they ain't even worth it. I'm telling you with a, from a factual point of view. I've come across a few sisters that I was interested at one time. And, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I have my issues, right? I, I, sometimes I lose my temper and I, you know, go off. But overall, I, I got four children who all respect me daily. And um, they, they've been taken care of well. You know, I've, I bought cars for every one of my boys. Most likely buy one for my Daughter, I didn't get not one car bought for me by my parents. Not to say they're not good parents, but you know, at that you know, cars wasn't a big deal. I was raised in New York, so that I came up in a different way. You know, take the bus. Now, when the South, they need they need transportation, and I also look at my children as you know, just things that my parents didn't do. Like you know, I I I put my boys on my credit profile. To give them good credit because I learned that from a technique that the white folks were doing. For their children, I was going and doing all this cable, and these the kids got perfect credit. How, how did that happen? And then one of the parents pulled me to the side, yeah, you know, this is what we do. And I said, oh, great idea. I'll do that. And I did that from all of my boys. Um, so I'll do the same thing for my daughter, give her a head start. See, these are the things that other groups of people are doing. They're thinking ahead for their children. See, what we are doing as a people, and I'm putting men and women in this category, because some of you, you brothers are so, now, now I, I'm trying to, some of y'all brothers, I'm, I'm wondering how y'all feeling right now, because y'all ain't got sports like y'all used to. COVID-19, they shut all that down. What y'all doing now? They entertain yourself, watching old games, because I know they're putting all the classics on and all that. Or you trying to build a business, one or the other, because I know, the people I'm in, in, in connection with, we're working on businesses right now. Every day, I'm having a conversation about a business and how to make more money. And I realized that without a woman touching my business, I can't get bigger than where I am. I'm pretty good right now. I make good money doing what I do, but I'm not going to get there to that multi-million dollar status without a woman. I know that. I know the power of See, this show is not to degrade the black woman. It's to really wake them up to say, listen, y'all need to rethink your behaviors because we need the sisters in order to move forward. We can't just write them off like that, like some people have. You understand? You can't do that. It's how we move forward as a people without, you know, your sisters, you know, come on. My mom is a uh, is a sister. Good mother. Married to the same man for 50 years. Been with him even longer than 50 years. Six children, all from the same mother and father. So I know the idea of a good woman was my mom perfect. No, nobody's a perfect parent. We all make mistakes. But overall, there was stability and consistency there. You know, they religious, you know, they got their religious point of views and it's worked for them. It didn't work for me, but it's working for them. It kept them together without that because my mom came from a toxic black woman household. I love my grandmother to death. I still miss her when she passed, but she was a staunch alcoholic. She died at a very young age, and she used to do things that would embarrass the family. 
But so my mother overcame, and she's the oldest of uh, seven brothers and sisters. Um, so what my mother has overcome bring, coming up in as a child says a lot about her. Because she could have went down the same path. Out of all her brothers and sisters, my mom is the only one alive. Well, it's one other still alive. One other. But coincidentally, this one that's still alive was not raised in the same household. Oh, um, it was my my grandfather's um, child, not from the same mom, who we came in contact with each other. I just want to say three, four years ago. We I didn't know she existed until three, four years ago. Oh, you know, I was adopted, and this is <laughs> the story. She had a toxic mother who wasn't really in her life for whatever reason, and she told me that story. But what I'm saying, we got to, when we when we look at our nation as a people, we don't get any further than our women. We don't. It's impossible. And she broke it down really, really uh, sharply but eloquently. She, she put it into perfect context. And this is not to let you brothers off, off the hook, because y'all, you know, I'm going to be talking about y'all, because some of y'all Lazy, don't want to do your own research, want to ask me every little damn question, and, and the answer be right in front of your face. Want to send me a text of, is the passport people taking passports? What the hell? Go on the passport website and look it up. This is, brothers are doing this consistently. Like, how y'all going to raise a family and you can't even think to go on to the state.gov and look up when these people are how they're processing. How do you think I get the information? I appreciate y'all thinking highly of me. Hey, I can't even know the answer. I appreciate that. But think about it. If I'm studying to try to bring y'all new information, then y'all dragging me into these little crazy questions. And I call them crazy because it, it means you're not thinking for yourself. If you want a queen, you got to be a king. You got to be a man. Standing on your own two feet and strong. See, a lot of sisters were really uh, admiring that group of militia people that went down to Georgia to the KKK thing. See, they looked at the surface of the video. You know, I came, I go and peel back the layers of everything and, and, and find all of the bullshit that's in there, <laughs> right? That video looked good on the face. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Because you've never seen anything that, like that before, right? Image wise, it looked Okay, it was great. It, it it uplifted me to a degree. But when I pulled back the layers and I saw guys and a couple of videos pointed this out, I had saw it myself. The way they were holding their weapons, some of them, because he got on there and said that they were uh, ex military. We all ex military. Who is he talking about? Because half of them guys don't look like they even went to Boy Scouts. The way they was holding, one guy had his gun, his rifle on the ground, and he put his hand, like he put the butt of the, the rifle on the ground, and then put his hand over the, the barrel, the end of the barrel, to, to lift himself up off the ground. He used it like a king. I'm like, what? Everybody knows if you train just a little bit on weapons, you do not handle your weapon like that. You always hand it in, handle your weapon in a way safely away from others. And you never put your hand on the back at, at the opening of the barrel. So we know he's not trained. God didn't even know what to do with the weapon. If it was a real gun, who knows? If it was even loaded, who knows? And then the formation that they were walking in, they were all crowded together. So if a group of people came and attacked them, they was all going to get picked off. <laughs> you don't you don't form it form like that. I saw that I saw the video I saw all of the defects. Then a couple of other people I watched some other videos of people pointing out you know, show it. one guy had a jammed rifle. You could see the opening where you know, it was jammed. One guy had a scope on backwards. <laughs> See, and then he, the guy actually said, yeah, we will take Texas as part of the land. You know how big Texas is? And do, and do you know how many guns is in Texas? No matter who who, who it is? <laughs> like, come on. See, 
that's why I'm not quick to follow stuff. Because people would ask me, oh, would you join that group? What do you think? And I was like, nah, I got to investigate this place before I say I would want to be a part of that. I got to see who I'm dealing with. Is he real or not? Is this just a show? Because sometimes, you know, the government will send people like that to draw you out into the open to see what you're all about. Then you get picked off. Okay, you're going into a file. My son had, hey, what about that group? You know, you're going to do this? And I said, no, I'm not. No, sir. Because I looked and I saw issues there. The things that weren't said, there were issues. You know, 7.58, two minutes before 8. And I'll say this lastly, as a positive note, um, the brothers you guys are, you know, despite the silly questions I get from very few of you, not all of you are like that. Um, y'all stepping up your game. You know, brothers are opening up business, transportation businesses. I've helped brothers who had some serious problems a few years ago with the law. And now they own trucking companies. So what they did was they took the information, got themselves out of trouble. I didn't get them out of trouble. I helped them. I aided them. It was their own work and study. Everybody that gets out of trouble when I helped them <coughs> use their own energy to get out of help, uh, trouble. They read. They study. Like, they come with me and say, hey, you, I can't, what do you think it is? They study. Now, I got a few people that come to me and think they're studying, and I know they're not studying. They're listening to videos, and then they come with me saying these crackpot ideas instead of going to open up that those laws and read it for themselves. And then when I get short patience with them, they say, I'm mean. I'm not being nice or negative. No, because I have time for the bullshit. We are living in trying times, and I ain't got time for weak individuals in my life. Because it's going to take strong individuals over the next year to make it through what we're about to go through. We're about to go through some tough times. But as Reverend Ike says, their tough times don't have to be yours. You have to be mentally prepared, thinking, prosperity, wealth, and good health. Just be prepared. Not to mean that those things are not going to knock on your door to challenge your constitution. I don't have time for that. I made a decision. I was reflecting yesterday. Who in my life right now I need to discard? Not discard in a bad way. Just say, no, hey, I don't got time for you. You ain't willing to do the work. You want somebody to hold your hand. You're not willing to read stuff and comprehend. Sometimes it takes 10 times to read something before you comprehend it. That's what it takes me, even with all of the knowledge I have. Sometimes I got to read stuff over and over again. And then it clicks. No, y'all want to read it and skim it one time and then want to email and send me your questions. Nah. Then you ain't ready to go to the next level. And I'm seeing it. Some of y'all are exposing yourself more and more every day. And some of y'all in my premium group. And I see clearly that y'all ain't ready for this next level information, this next level of prosperity. Y'all still on the ground floor. Some of y'all want me to stroke y'all emotions. Oh, poor you. No, I'm not doing that. Because in the next few months, you're going to see some things that you've never seen before. How are you going to react? I'm going to let it shake you? If you can't read a simple document from these people and comprehend it, then you're not going to not survive it. So I suggest y'all get your IQ up, your study IQ up, and get it going. Stop worrying about Will, Jada, Dwayne, and all of these other people. You don't even talk about this stuff, but it was just such a conversation amongst our people so much. You know, I just said, I'll talk about it, you know, a little bit. All right, on to the next thing. It's 802. Um, but wait a minute, I forgot. On a positive note, y'all brothers are doing good. That's starting your businesses. More and people are starting business. I had a couple of people come to me and we setting up corporations for them, getting them funding, all of that stuff. That's going good. Um, sisters are opening up businesses like I've never seen before. They're really taking a, a, 
a, a, a, a tear in their future. And that's what we're looking for. The good guys are looking for that type of woman. We know y'all not going to be perfect. But if we could build with y'all and make stuff grow, that's 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 priority. If we could disagree and still work together, you know, we ain't going to always agree. But be free to allow a person to be disagreeable. And, hey, let's still work together. Okay, you, you try it that way. Let's see how it works. It might, might work. All right. Oh. Uh, what I was going to do. All right. Say those three, I talked a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short little break and um, prepare myself for the next part. And don't, and I will be talking about homeschooling. That is a definite. So uh, I'll be right back. Are you aware of the charges that Michael Jackson is currently facing? Yes, sir. Uh, And for the record, these charges hurt me the most. So he's guilty. Look, man, look. Michael Jackson has many faces. None of them look guilty to me. You gotta look in the eyes, not the noses. He's been accused of this more than once. So? Some people say the cucumbers taste better pickle. What? Huh? What? told you that the accusers correctly described Michael's penis to investigators. Sir, I have never seen Michael's alleged penis, but I bet you that I could describe it. All right, let me get There's a head, a shaft, some balls, hair, maybe pressed, permed hair, and the glitter sprinkled on. That is correct. Well, I don't know. Come on, dude. I couldn't pick my own penis out of a lineup, all right? And me and my penis is like this, son. What about Michael saying it's okay to have children sleep with him? That doesn't mean anything. I'm sure there's plenty of kids that sleep in the bed with their adults all the time, and nothing happens. So do you think Michael Jackson is guilty of the charges against him? No, man. He made Thriller. <laughs> thriller. So you'd let your children sleep with him? Are you aware that Robert Blake is facing a charge of murder? Oh, yeah. Beretta did that. Mr. Chappelle, are you aware that Robert Kelly is being charged with child pornography? Yes, I've heard of such things. You've seen the video tape? Have I seen it? Like 80 times. Better part when he's waiting for it to come over and he's looking in the camera like... Do <laughs> you think it was Robert Kelly on the tape? Well, I have to say it was. So then, you believe he urinated on a 15-year-old girl? Whoa, hold on, lady. I didn't say all that. You know, with these tapes, they can do a lot of things. For all I know, that piss was digital. They, they get crazy with special effects. <laughs> look, look, check this out. I didn't even just do that. Did I do that? That piss is digital. They do crazy stuff with special effects. What about the girl corroborating the story? So what? How much money does this girl stand to make by corroborating this story? I tell you what, you give me that kind of money, or Kelly could fart in my dinner tonight. <laughs> Pray for her. So, besides the tape and the girl corroborating the allegations, what more would it take for you to believe he's guilty? All right. If I saw a table R. Kelly peeing on a girl while he was singing piss on me, and the girl was holding two forms of government ID while a police officer was there, like four or five of my buddies and Neil taking notes. Wow. I'm not finished. And his grandmother has to be there to confirm his identity. That's my Robert. Always peeing on people. Don't forget a hair, Robert. Mr. Chappelle, isn't that excessive? No. No, it's not excessive. Listen, lady, the burden of proof is on the state. On the state. You have got to prove to me beyond a reasonable doubt whether or not this man is a pisser. Aren't your doubts unreasonable? No, it's not unreasonable. Look. 
We're talking about a justice system that had 500 people whose cases were overturned by DNA evidence. I seen a tape with five cops beat up a nigga, and it, they said that they had a reasonable doubt. I got my doubts too, all right? How come they never found Big and Tupac's murder, but they arrest OJ the next day? Nicole Simpson can't rap? I want to <laughs> Mr. Chappelle, you're dismissed. <laughs> and that's from the heart. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. All right. Okay, let's do this last thing, and then I'll take some calls. Remember, press one, and I'll open your line up. Oh, if you got something to say about what the young lady said, you know, we can talk about that. If you got something else to talk about, we can talk about that. Oh. All right, but first, let's talk about this SBA money. I got to find the, uh, the link. Uh, all right. All right. Where is it? Oh, I closed it out. I asked it, so I got to go here. <sighs> Why did I do that? I had it all ready to go. All right, so you go to funding op- funding options. So they got this program. They open back up, and it's under the coronavirus relief program. So it's the EIDL program. That they got a PPP. That's the Paycheck Protection Program. That one you're gonna need a whole lot of documentation to even get that through, and you have to go to a bank has to process that information. So, um, the EIDL, let me make sure y'all can hear me. Hang on. Y'all can still hear me? Y'all with me? Because this is very important information. Some of y'all might, and pretty much anybody can fill out for this. Like, if you have a small business, website, you can go and get this money. And they're just dropping the money in, in people's accounts. Fast, like two or three days, it's in the bank account. Um, so, of course, you guys know that I'm pretty much private with my bank accounts. I don't do anything with my social, everything's EINs and business accounts, right? So, of course, to get this money, you have to, oh, uh, that's the information you got to give up. You got to give up the social, there's no way around it. If they want information, they want the EIN for the business, but they also want that social. And then they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? Okay? Uh, and, and let me read the first part of it. It says, SBA is collecting the requested information in order to make a loan under SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program to the qualified entities listed in this application that are impacted by coronavirus COVID-19. The information information will be used to determine whether the applicant is eligible for economic injury loan. If you do not submit all the information requested, your loan cannot be fully processed. The applicant can understand that SBA is relying upon the self-certification contained in this application to verify that the applicant applicant is an eligible entity and that Applicant is providing this self certification under penalty of perjury pursuant to 28 USC 1746 for verification purposes. So, so they're saying under USC 1746, right? That's what they're saying. We all know that's the unsworn declaration, right? That's, and it's two types of unsworn declarations. One is with the within the United States and without, right? And let, let me read the law. I've read this many times, but I'll read it again. Wherever under any law of the United States or under any rule, regulation, order, or requirement made pursuant to the law, any matter is required or permitted to be supported, evidence established approved by the sworn declaration, verification, certificate, statement, oath, or affidavit in writing of the person making the same. Other than a deposition or an oath of office or an oath required to be taken before a specified official other than a notary public, 
just matter may with like force and effect be supported evidence established and proved by unsworn declaration certificate verification or statement in writing of such person which is described by him as true under penalty of perjury and dated in substantially the following form one if executed without the united states it should say quotes are i declare or certify, verify, or state, you can say either one. You can say, I declare, certify, under penalty of perjury, or I declare, verify, or I declare, state, under penalty of perjury, under the laws of the United States of America, that the foregoing is true and correct, executed on, you put the date and the signature. Or, if executed within the United States, its territory, its possession, or all commonwealth, I declare, certify, verify, and state on the penalty of perjury that the foregoing is true and correct, executed on date. Signature. So, what I'm going to do, because I had it all ready to go so I could read the um, the thing that they want you to, to attest to and how it's written, right? So, I'm going to go through this whole thing. So, if you're going to do this, I'm going to actually show you how to fill it out properly. We are, we always give y'all stuff for free. I know this is going to probably turn into a small teaching lesson somewhere like a webinar, but by the time we do that, this will be probably over with. But here it is. So, applicant is a business with not more than 500 employees. So, all those people that didn't stay on the line, y'all about to learn how to fill this out and do it properly as a national. Now, I still have, I'm going to give you my cons about this whole thing. So, um, you would say applicant is a business with not more than 500 employees. So, if you don't have 500 employees, you would check that off. Most people would, feel, would do that. They have many other uh, businesses that you can pick, nonprofit, blah, blah, blah. But for the most cases, that number one, that first one is what you're going to pick off, right? Review and check all the following. Applicant is not engaged in any illegal activity. No principle of the applicant with a 50% or greater ownership interest is more than 60 days delinquent on child support application. So you can't get this if you got problems with child support. More than 60 days. That's, that's probably going to cancel a lot of y'all out. Now, remember, it says self-certification. So what I think they're doing is allowing applications just – going through their rubber stamping these and giving out the money, and then they coming back later on. And I, I reason, I'm going to tell you why they're doing this in a minute. So the next one, applicant does not present live performance of or prurient, prurient, that's P-R-U-R-I-E-N-T, sexual nature, uh, or derived directly or indirectly more than de minimis, gross revenue through the sale of products or services or the presentation of any depictions or displays of a prurient sexual nature. Well, what is that prurient? What is that? I never saw that word before. A little something. I saw it the other night. Definition. That's what does that mean? I have a cursing and excessive interest in sexual matters, so it's got to be excessive, voyeuristic, Salacious, licentious, lustful. That's that's a hmm, okay. It's a weird way of putting it. Applicant does not derive more than one third of gross annual revenue from legal gambling activity. Applicant is not in the business of lobbying. Applicant cannot be state, local, or municipal government entity, and cannot be a member of Congress. So it says applicant must review to check all of the following. If applicant is unable to check all of the following, following applicant is not eligible an eligible entity. So that's what they're saying. You got to be able to check all of these off that you're not doing any of this. You don't owe child support more than 60 days. That's going to mess a lot of y'all up uh, that have child support issues. All right, so you continue. It's going to ask you for the business name. I'm actually filling this out, but I'm not going to submit it. So my business name would be, I don't know what it is. So I'm filling this out. Blam. Then it's going to add a trade name. So the trade name is basically a DBA. You're operating as a DBA. 
you know, so if your business legal name is like mine is high tirade, what's the DBA? Trade name, same thing. <laughs> that would ask for the EIN slash social for sole proprietorship. So if you're sole proprietorship, they want the social. Okay. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to put any EIN number down here. Uh, so I'm not submitting this. So, okay. Organization type. So you pick whether it's a limited liability company, sole proprietorship, C corporation, S corporation, general partnership, limited liability partnership, limited partnership, cooperative. Oh, and they got trust down here too. So a trust can actually get some of this money. That's how I would do it, a trust. Independent contract and other. So let's just for the sake of this, we're gonna put uh um I'm gonna put I'm gonna put uh trust. Well, I'm going to put limited liability. It don't matter. Uh, is the applicant a nonprofit? No. Is the applicant a franchise? No. Then it's going to ask you for revenue. So you got to tell them what you did last year. Gross revenue for 12 months prior to the date of disaster, January 31st, 2020, and then cost of goods sold. So if you sold goods, you got to put that in there. Because this loan money is going to be based on how much you generated last year. And from my, from people that have gotten this money, it's usually 10%. The loan they give you is 10% of the revenue you told them you had. So if you get $100,000, it's going to be $10,000. Okay? Right? And like some people put $15,000, they got $1,500. 10%. So that's the true pattern that I've seen. So I'm going to put the numbers here, whatever that is. Oh, uh, cost of goods sold. We'll put a number here. You know, this is all safe to show you how to fill this out. And if you got rental properties, so people who own properties and they're not getting paid rent because people are not paying the rent, you can fill this out and see how much middle income you you lost. You write that in. Then it's got nonprofit or agriculture enterprise cost of operation. That don't apply. You don't have to fill that out. Compensation from other sources. If you make money somewhere else. You put that in, group description of compensation source. Then you're going to put your address here. Primary business address cannot be a P.O. box. Alternative business phone. What, what date was the business established? You're going to put the date on there. Earn ownership. How long did you own the business? Did you take it over? When did you take over the business? Business activity. Me, I'll say... For the sake of this automotive sales, business matter because I do have a dealership. Now I own a dealership, but I let the guy who I'm partnered with do it, and he got money. But he didn't do it. He didn't do it right, and you know he put some numbers in there. He got he got he got some money, but not much to put in. How many employees you have? So let's say I got five employees, right? Hit next. Let me check on y'all real quick on the chat. What y'all talking about? Uh, All right, good. Y'all following me? Y'all good? Can you hear me? You're quiet out there. Chat's quiet. You letting y'all put stuff in the chat? Type it in. Now, I see some people in the chat that, you know, be texting me, asking me questions. Won't y'all do y'all questions now? Put them questions in the chat. I'm here. My time is yours right now. All right. No, no, I know I'm picking on some people, but y'all got to start listen. I don't want to be answering y'all questions every day and on, on weekends. I don't want to do that. I'll be concentrating on spending time with my daughter, doing stuff and other things that I want to do. I want to have my mind to myself. Um, so if y'all got a question, type it right now. If you want to be anonymous, come in there as anonymous and type your question. You don't want to feel like you want to get on the phone, type it in. Let's let's get it all. Uh, let's get it in. Somebody said, "How do you fill out a county summary sheet?" I don't know unless I'm looking at it. Uh, basically, the assumption is if it says it, a summary sheet seems like it's a uh, a form like a cover letter that they're using, and it tells you what you want on there, what they need on there. So, who you are. What type of form you're filing? What is it for? It's a power of attorney, 
blah, blah, blah. You write that in. You know, I would have to see that form in order to answer that question. You might want to put the form in the chat so I can look at it. Uh, let's get back to this application. So they now they want the owner's information. So I put my information here, telephone number. Uh, I'm the owner, percent ownership, 100%. Then they want that old SSN right here. You want it. In the date of birth, they want it. They want that in leagues. That's what they didn't want place of birth. You know what I'm going to put? This is where the national thing comes, right? So I would say, when they say place of birth, I would say New York, USA, just like I filled out my whole passport. So all you know how to do passport, y'all put that at New York, USA. They let you type it out. Now they ask you a U.S. citizen. Of course not. I say no, right? And something's missing because it's not letting me put it in. Oh, take the dashes out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. Um, something's not right. Don't let me hit next. All right, let's do this again. All right, there. Green it across the board. Why is it not letting me go? Oh, I didn't. I say, is your business owned by a business entity? So if you have a trust that owns a business, business, you would say yes. But if you don't, it's just you. You say no. All right. Next. All right. In the past year, has the business or listed owner been convicted of a felony committed during and in connection with riot or civil disorder? Ooh. So if y'all been part of the riots and y'all got arrested, you can't get this money. Other declared disaster ever been engaged in the production or distribution of any product or service that has been determined to be obscene by a court of competent jurisdiction. So if you've been uh, convicted, uh, committed during a connection with a riot or something like that, you can't get this money. Is the applicant or any listed owner currently suspended or disbarred, debarred from contacting contracting with the federal government or receiving federal grants alone. So you know y'all getting in the contract with the federal government when you're doing these loans. I'm making y'all aware. I'm not telling y'all what to do or not to do. This is a personal decision on your own. All right. Are you presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in within the last five years? And then for a felony, it's got an A and B question. You know, you better answer no to that or you ain't getting it. But if you remember, you, you're doing this under penalty and perjury. Now, if anyone assisted you in completing this application, whether you pay a fee for the service or not, that person must enter their information below. And then it says, do you give permission for SBA to discuss any portion of this application with representative representative listed above? And I would say no. All right. Now it's asking for the bank name. Where do you want the funds? Okay. Now, let's read these disclosures. This is the tricky part. Tricky, tricky, tricky. It says, on behalf of the individual owners identified in this application and for the business applying for the loan, we authorize my, our insurance company, bank, financial institution, or other creditors to release to SBA all records and information necessary to process this application and for the SBA to obtain credit information about the individuals completing this application. If my loan is approved, additional information may be required prior to loan closing. I will be advised in writing what information will be required to obtain my loan funds. I hereby authorize the SBA to verify my past and present employment information and salary history as needed to process and service the disaster loan. I authorize SBA as required by Privacy Act to release any information collected in connection with this application to federal, state, local, tribal, and nonprofit organizations. Examples given, Red Cross, Salvation Army, many a night disaster service. They got a many a night disaster service. Huh. SBA Resource Partners. See, they, that's a Christian organization that got its own disaster services. Does your church got a disaster service? Y'all might want to change church. Maybe become a Mennonite. 
SBA resource partners for the purpose of assisting me with my SBA application evaluating eligibility for additional assistance or notifying me of the availability availability of such assistance. I would not exclude from participating in or deny the benefits of or otherwise subject to discrimination under any program activity for which I receive federal financial assistance from SBA, any person on grounds of age, color, handicap, marital status, national origin, race, religion, or status. So they can't discriminate on you. Oh, uh, that's a good thing for you not being a U.S. citizen. It's national origin. So when you say no, they can't deny that application, right? I will report to SBA Office of the Inspector General, Washington, D.C., 20416, any federal employee who offers in return for compensation of any kind to help get this loan approved. I have not paid anyone connected with the federal government for helping getting this loan. Certification as to truthful information. By signing this application, you certify that all information in your application and submitted with your application is true and correct, to the best of your knowledge, and that you will submit truthful information in the future. Warning. Whoever willfully, wrongfully misapplies the proceeds of an SBA disaster loan shall be civilly liable to the administrator in an amount equal to one and one half times the original principal amount of the loan under 15 U.S.C. 636B. So let's look 15 U.S.C. 636B. Uh, see, before I do anything, I'm reading it. Entirety. I'm not leaving nothing to chance. So B says background checks. Prior to approval of any loan made pursuant to this subsection on section 503 of the Small Business Investment Act of 1958, 15 U.S.C. 697, the administrator may verify the applicant's criminal background or lack thereof through the best available means including the possible use of national crime information center computer system at the Federal Bureau of S Investigation. So, guess what's going to happen when you get go for this loan? They're going to create a file in the FBI on you because, you know, they got to create a file to check your background. They're going to the FBI to check you out. So, you're going to have a file. And let's make sure we read the right one. It says 636B. I read it. Let's see. 636B. That's the right one. So the FBI is going to have a file on you, which they already have already, but it's going to be added to the file. So if you make any misrepresentation on that application, they could use that against you. Like I said, I think they're just going to rubber stamp and give you the money. And when you default is when the problem is going to come. They're going to say, well, you didn't pay, then they're going to check you out. And they're going to find problems, and then they're going to charge you with that. And it says they can do one and one-half times the amount. So if you, you're going to end up owing more, plus any other charges they want to put on it. Gonna... So in addition, any false statement or risk misrepresentation to SBA may result in criminal, civil, or administrative sanctions, including but not limited to one, fines and imprisonment, or both under 15 U.S.C. 645, 8 U.S.C. 1001, 18 U.S.C. 1014, 18 U.S.C. 1040, 18 U.S.C. 3571, and any other applicable laws. Two, trouble damages and civil penalties under False Claims Act, 31 U.S.C. 3729. Three, double damages and civil penalties, uh, double damages, you see that? And civil penalties under the Federal Fraud Civil Remedies Act, 31 U.S.C. 3802, and four, suspension or just debarment from all federal procurement and non-procurement transactions. Statutory fines may increase if amended by the Federal Civil Penalties Inflation Adjustment Act, Improvements Act of 2015. And this is how they got the unsworn statement written. I hereby certify under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States that the above is true and correct. So that's signing within the United States. As I've read you, read the uh, 28 U.S.C. 17, it says for it to be outside of the United States, without the United States, they have to say, I declare. 
Certified verifiers stay under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America. See, they left out the America. The foregoing is true and correct. So when you, and they only give you a box to check. Now, I think you could do this application by mail, but it's going to take longer so that you can correct that. But, you know, uh, know, by the time you get in, it might be too late. So, you know, they close these applications down. Now it says click for additional statements required by law and executive orders. So most people probably never even click that button. Never even read what I read. So I'm going to go down to the Privacy Act, 5 U.S.C., uh, Section 552A. Anyone can request to see or get copies of any personal information that we have in your file. Any personal information in your file that is retrieved by individual identifiers, such as name or social security number, is protected by the Privacy Act, which means requests for information about you may be denied unless we have your written permission to release the information to the requester or unless the information is subject to disclosures under the Freedom of Information Act. The agreements and certification section of this form contains written permissions for us to disclose the information resulting from the collection to state, local, or private disaster relief services. The Privacy Act authorized SBA to make certain routine uses of information protected by that act. One such routine use for SBA loans system of records that when this information indicates a violation or potential violation of law, whether civil, criminal, or administrative in nature, SBA may refer it to the appropriate agency, whether federal, state, local, or foreign, charged with responsibilities for or otherwise involved investigation, prosecution, enforcement, and prevention of such violations. Another routine use of personal information is to assist in obtaining credit bureau reports on the disaster loan applicants and guarantors for purpose of origination, servicing, and liquidating disaster loans. For additional background, uh, it says C69FR 58598 for additional background of routine uses. Under this provision of the Privacy Act, you are not required to provide Social Security numbers, but see the information on the Debt Collection Act below. We use Social Security numbers to dis- distinguish between people with a similar or same name for credit decisions and for debt collection purposes. Failure to provide this number may not affect any right, benefit, or privilege to which you are entitled by law. But having the number makes it easier for us to more accurately identify whom adverse credit information applies and keep accurate loan records. So they're saying you don't even have to give your social. So in that spot where it says social, you can just put some zeros there. Right? But that's going to generate questions. Because it doesn't give you a choice not to put it in there. Okay? Let's see something here. Something else I wanted to read to you. Here it is. Right of Privacy, Financial Privacy Act of 1978. This notifies you as required by the Right to Financial Privacy Act of 1978 of our right to access financial records held by financial institutions that were or are doing business with you or your business. This includes financial institutions participating in loans or loan guarantees. The law provides that we may access your financial records when considering or administering administering government loan or loan guarantee assistance to you. We must give a financial institution a certificate of our compliance with the act When we first request access to your financial records, no other certification is required for later access. Our access rights continue for the term of any approved loan or loan guarantee. We do not have to give you any additional notice of access rights during the term of the loan or loan guarantee. We may transfer to another government authority any financial records included in a loan application or about an approved loan or loan guarantee as necessary to provide process, service, liquidate, or foreclose a loan or loan guarantee. We will not permit any transfer of your financial records to another government authority except as required or permitted by law. So you get this loan, you are given them, as long as that loan is open, the right to access your financial records at any time. 
So you basically open your your whole privacy is gone. Okay. We barely have them now where they, you know, they just say, but you are actually signing a contract for them to get into your business. If you're going to do this, make sure you did it uh, correctly. Don't lie. Do not lie. Uh, I'm warning you because they can prove it. They got, they, they know what you're doing. So there it is, the SBA. Uh, me personally, I'm leaving it alone. I know I can get some bread, but I ain't fooling with it. I'm doing okay. I don't really need, really need it anyway. But anybody can do this. If you're a barber who's been out of work because of COVID, you can do it. Uh, if you are, you know, pretty much everybody can do this, this particular one. Anybody. Got a business, website. And, you know, you put it in, you get some money. But just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, some of the questions that might pop up, CPNs. You got a bank and a CPN. I would not recommend you give them that bank account. Because, you get, you know, you can't get around. You got to give them the social, no CPNs. You know, some of you, some people are going to be foolish enough to pull that off. And clink, clink, here you go. Uh, down the yellow brick road. All right, there it is, SBA. Last thing, but not the least thing. So, homeschooling. Let me give you all a website. This is a website. Uh, the person who runs this website oh, is very good at what they do. Oh, what do I do here? Website looks good, too. All right. Putting it on website. So if you're interested in homeschooling your children, <clears throat> contact uh, that's Sheba. Omani. This is the website. Uh, she's been doing this for years. Very good at what she does. So she has consultations you can give. Like say, if you want to, um, let's just go to the website. Let's do that. Make it easy for myself. You join the mailing list by putting your email there so you'll be updated. So let's see the services here. You got homeschooling consultations, homeschool curriculum, tutoring services. So if you're wanting to set up homeschool before the new school year starts, this is the person to talk to to show you how to set it up, show you how to withdraw the children from school. I think there's a template here for that. Um, withdrawal letter that's $35 and then a religious humanization exemption statement uh, she's got one Not it's not quite the same as mine but we're going to work together to, to adjust that one the religious humanization statement you have is the one that the state provides for you to fill out but it doesn't have any laws on it right and um, you know mine is beefed up saying specifically why so they can't dispute that why do i do that because the constitution says they can't infringe on your religious freedoms and she's got an early childhood homeschool curriculum guide um then a, a supply list um so there you go that's just to touch on that go there check it out uh next week we'll be talking about it